Hello and welcome to ATF TV. We are very pleased to welcome back ATF Executive Editor Umesh Desai, who joins us today from Hong Kong to talk about the year just gone and the new year ahead. Welcome back to ATF TV, Umesh. Thank you, Christine. Umesh, it has been quite a year. A lot of things have happened for you. What really stands out? You're right. It's been a remarkable year, a landmark year, the, the kind which very few might have uh, even forecasted at the start of the year. The, the breadth of the pandemic, the impact on the economies, uh, you could not have modeled them into your uh, market models and uh, investment strategies at the start of the year, and uh, uh, which is what it is. I mean, uh, it has caught everybody by surprise, economies, markets. And uh, what has been even more remarkable has been the, the whole experience. I mean, the GFC taught central banks the, the importance of coordinated action. Unfortunately, uh, while there was a coordinated action by the central banks uh, during this financial year, the health side of things, uh, the, the coordination could not be extended there. So, so what was happening was uh, the lack of coordination on that uh, front meant that you know, much of the uh, impact could not be felt in economies and markets. So therefore, you have uh, you know Asia where the lockdown has been pretty extreme and pretty strict, but uh, compared to the rest of the Western world, for example, where things are still very, very lax and loose. So therefore, uh, the levels of infection, the levels of uh, the, the pandemic spread has varied quite greatly. And therefore, what has uh, happened is, uh, as a result, market has been very volatile uh, because uh, investors are unsure of how to price this in their uh, investment models and their strategies. And next year, what can we expect for 2021? Well, it's fairly, uh, it's now to, a given that uh, central banks are going to keep interest rates uh, at very, very ultra low rates for, for a long, long time, at least two to three years at least for the big uh, central banks. And uh, therefore, it does seem that the dollar will remain on the defensive. And uh, as a result, uh, EM is expected to perform quite well. So um, it's not just Asia, which has obviously led uh, most of the, the, the recovery in terms of health situation, but also the rest of uh, the EM, which uh, you know, moves in inverse direction of the dollar. The EM assets uh, in, the, in those markets should also perform well. So this has been the wisdom uh, that most uh, fund managers have been uh, having the uh, talking about and uh, we, we do expect that uh, the, the one thing that uh, has to be remembered is that uh, volatility will is, is going to be here to stay. Fixed income investors, for example, cannot just stay uh, focused on, on, on carry and coupon, but uh, they should also be looking at uh, things like capital gains and uh, extreme movements in, in prices to make their uh, uh, the balance sheets pay for themselves. I mean, for example, if you look at the, uh, the a pile of negative yielding bonds right now it's 18 trillion uh, and if you take into account the number of bonds that are uh, uh, yielding less than one percent the pile is is absolutely is humongous and therefore uh, you know the one percent is is important because you know uh, even though uh, you might be breaking even you need to make a little bit more for your funds to pay for themselves for administrative fees etc Therefore, to make fixed income work, uh, you need to uh, have that at least, uh, you know, it, the yields to be above 1%. And uh, that means that uh, there is very little uh, scope in uh, the rates market. So where are you going to look for, for your returns? So it has to be equities, it has to be high yield, it has to be distressed, and it has to be the credit markets. And finally, in terms of Asia, what's the one thing we should watch out for? Is there one big standout theme that will emerge in 2021? Well, Asia has, uh, you know, a lot going for itself. Uh, uh, well, the way uh, Asian countries handled the pandemic uh, because of the SARS experience, uh, much of North Asia was very well prepared and they took the right measures and it's all paying off. Uh, also, uh, Asia has some uh, long-term uh, advantages, such as the demographic dividends uh, in terms of uh, its consumption-driven growth, etc. So, uh, we can expect a lot more of that happening. I mean, uh, China's uh, you know recovery has been uh, uh, applauded uh, by investors across the, the world, and uh, that should continue. Although the uh, the engine of growth is is going to vary a little bit. 
we're going to see, uh, uh, you know, it's not just uh, the economic growth because the, so far uh, consumption has been muted. Uh, we could see consumption coming to the fore next year. And therefore, uh, the, uh, the the comeback is going to be much more sort of evenly keeled. Uh, we can expect uh, uh, exports sort of uh, uh, being more, a bit more muted, uh, principally because uh, other economies are uh, beginning to see uh, subsequent waves of the pandemic and uh, consumption finally taking off because uh, as uh, uh, you know uh, China's uh, stimulus measures uh, kick in uh, people have much more to spend and uh, China has made it very clear that uh, they are going to depend much more on the domestic economy uh, for growth going forward. Thank you Umesh. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for watching. To read more about the risk and opportunity that surrounds Chinese bond, please check out asiatimesfinancial.com. For the world's best news on Asia's emerging markets, economies, and more, I'm Christine Zhou, and you're watching ATF TV.